Hello, and welcome back to another YouTube video. Hi, I'm Speeder. Okay, it's been a while since I filmed one of these before, uh, but, um, I'm back with another Dragon Prince review video, uh, filming this on June 10th, 2022. I have about two hours to film this, but it's not gonna be that long, because I have a game night with friends in, like, two hours. But anyways, um, if, uh, if the time hadn't been rescheduled to four from two, I wouldn't be able to make this video today, but, uh, yeah. Anyways, so, if you have not seen the title of today's video, I will be doing a review of The Dragon Run Season 3, Episode 4, The Midnight Desert. I freaking love this episode. This video will contain spoilers for the first two seasons of The Dragon Prince and the first four episodes of Season 3. I'll try to avoid spoilers for the rest of Season 3, but guess what? Big announcement for The Dragon Prince. Season 4 has, like, a... It's either, like, a name or, like, a... What it's gonna be about, and we have, like, a small sneak peek of the beginning, like, the opening credits, which is awesome. We don't have a release date yet, but that's epic news, and I'm super excited. <laughs> Uh, the Mysteries of Erevos, I believe, is what we know as, a, like, a title. I don't know if it's, like, the name of the season, or... I'm trying to avoid spoilers as much as possible. I just know that that's the news that we have, and I am super excited for Season 4, and I will be reviewing it. Possibly without watching the next episodes. I don't know. We'll see. But, it all depends on if I finished Season 3 by that point. Um, yeah, so... <sighs> let's get started, I guess. I'll talk about my next four weeks worth of videos uh, at the end. Okay, so if, if you don't know how one of these reviews works, basically what I'm doing is I'm going over all of the events that happen in the episode, and I basically just talk about them and give my thoughts. Nothing much more to it than that. Anyways, uh, yeah. Let's just get started, I guess. Um. <clears throat> okay. So, at, at the beginning of this episode... We have a mysterious figure in the clouds with wings chasing after um, the uh, the messenger arrow that turns into a bird thing. I don't really know what to call it, but uh, this figure is chasing uh, this message to the Dragon Queen that was sent in the previous episode, and she's able to knock it out of the sky. Um, and then she reads it. Um, it has a mischievous look in her eye. Um, I wrote, We start with the message bird flying to the Dragon Queen. It is shot down by a boomerang-wielding flying elf. She steals the message. Okay, then we go over to Calamnarela. And there are going through the woods on the mounts that they got from uh, Rayla's home, and um, what's-his-face? Man, I am very bad with names of side characters right now. Let's see. Uh, let's see... Ithari. Yeah, Renan and Ithari. I remembered Renan, but yeah, Ithari. So, these are the mounts that they got from Ithari. They're riding through the forest. <laughs> we have Rayla's all competent on the mount, but she looks very sad. Uh, and then Callum's just flying around, being his clumsy self, which is a nice callback to Season 1, where he said that he could definitely not ride a horse. Uh, <laughs> which is great. And we love Callum. Um, I said, and Callum is struggling, okay. 
uh, Raylan is clearly sad from the previous day. So Callum catches up to her, notices that she's sad, uh, and tries to comfort her, and is like, Hey, when I was a kid, we did this thing called Big Feelings Time, where we would say that we had big feelings, and other people would say that... I do that they understand, which is actually a really cool thing. I think that's super healthy. And I'm like, I love your family, Callum. Wow. <laughs> it's great. Um, and they have this thing that's extremely healthy and <clears throat> can help children deal with emotions in a way that's healthy, which is really cool, and I actually really like the idea of that. Um, I'm not so sure about the name, but I don't know, I think it's really cool. Anyways, but, uh, Rayla's like, y'all are weird, I'm not gonna deal with my emotions. I'm not emotional, which is not healthy. That is the opposite of what you should be doing, Rayla. Come on. You can do better than that. I believe in you. Yeah, anyways. Um. Oh yeah, and she also threatens to hit him over the head. Uh, or... More accurately, she says, I'll make sure that there's a big feeling on the side of your head. Which suggests that she's going to hit him over the side of the head. But, yeah. Anyways. So, uh... Let's see. I was gonna say something. Oh, yeah. This scene, it just kind of shows the difference between Callum and Rayla. We have Callum who's trying to be healthy with his emotions. He's very open, very friendly. Um, well, which is just classic Callum. And then Rayla is using aggression uh, to express her feelings and to deal with these feelings that she has. Um, she's expressing them through aggressiveness and I'd love to see like a therapist reaction to this episode um, or the previous episode like all, th all three of these episodes I would love to see a therapist reaction because I'm very interested to see what someone like who's a professional would think of that I just think it just shows the different ways that they that they deal with their emotions which I find interesting yeah so uh then we go to Catullus. Um, Ezrin is sitting on his throne as usual, um, and that councilman who was dealing behind Ezrin's back with Kasif and Viren says that Kasif uh, requests an audience. So Prince Kasif comes into the throne room and he's like, I have an ultimatum for you. And he threatens Ezrin and says that he is going that if Catullus does not wage war on Zadia, then the three kingdoms who were affected by these Moonshadow Elf, well, quote unquote, Moonshadow Elf assassinations, when really we know that it was uh, Viren and Erebos doing that, um, sending those assassins made of magic, not actual Moonshadow Elves. Um, so he says that the three kingdoms that were affected by these attacks will all attack Catullus at once, which obviously is not a good thing and would lose a lot of lives, and Ezrin does realize this. Um, let's see. I also noticed that, um, when Kasif enters the room, you only really see one councilman, and it's the councilman who, um, who's been dealing with Kasif and Viren, but I noticed that he actually bows to Kasif, um, which is an interesting little note, um, because it was obviously on purpose since this is animated. And it's just interesting that even though we can't see any of the other council members, this guy bows to him, which, yeah, I found that a little weird, since we haven't really seen any bowing before. Um, yeah, okay. And they will be attacked. Okay, then we go to Viren in his cell, and he's sleeping, um, and the little bug, um, uh, little bug pal, sorry, uh, <laughs> does that count, does that count as a spoiler? I don't know. I'll, I'll be quiet. Okay, uh, yeah, so, Erevos as the bug, 
uh, starts making kind of like a web thing on Viren's eye, and he's like, I'm preparing you for greatness, which is freaking terrifying and oh, and ominous, so, yeah. Um, let's see. So, then we go back to Callum and Rayla, and, uh, an el that elf from the opening sequence shows up, and says that her name is Nyx. Rayla immediately does not trust this Nyx, uh, and tells her to go away. <laughs> or she's, uh, going to attack her, basically, is what she says. Uh, that's not the exact word she uses. Um... But Nyx is like, whoa, 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 I'm an emissary from the Dragon Queen, we received your message, which obviously is not true from the opening sequence. We can see that Nyx clearly stole the message, and that she is probably not an emissary from the Dragon Queen. Uh, which later in the episode, it's pretty much confirmed that that is the case. Um, but, so, she says that she's been authorized to take Zim herself, personally, to the Dragon Queen, uh, fly him there, and Rayla immediately distrusts her once again, and is like, uh, heck no, we're doing fine on our own. <sighs> I don't always love when uh, Rayla's not trusting of other people, but in this exact moment, good on you, Rayla. Good on you. <sighs> Anyways, so... Callum is pretending to be Elf Callum, and uh, he's immediately called out on that, so he stops that charade. I love Elf Callum, but yeah. <laughs> Just like we all love Human Rayla, but yeah. Anyways. Sorry, I'm still very scatterbrained. I forgot to... Wow. I'm... Yeah, okay. We're not gonna talk about that. Let's just continue. Um, okay. So... Next then says that she can take them all across the Midnight Desert. Um, and Rayla, still not clearly trust- still clearly not trusting her, um, asks Pow. So then we go back to Ezrin, um, and he is in his throne room. He's looking on the table that Kasif had set out the ultimatum on. Um, and the councilwoman, who I love, who I... Okay, I really need to know her name so I can just stop calling her councilwoman and councilman. Councilwoman. Uh, <laughs> Is it really Opelli? Is that her name? Opelli. It looks like it might be pronounced Opelli. Okay, I think her name is Council Council Member Opelli. Or Councilman Opelli. Opelli? Opelli? I'm just gonna say Opelli. Uh, and the Councilman. Salir? So it looks like it's Opelli and Salir, maybe. I don't know if that's how you pronounce their names, but it looks like that's what their names are. So Opelli says to Ezrin that they can win the battle because they have a more disciplined and well-trained army. Um, and Ezrin, being the absolute literal king that he is, begins asking her at what cost, how many people would we lose, and she says tens of thousands, which is obviously not a good thing, and Ezra's like, yeah, it's not a good thing, this is no triumph, as he says. Um, yeah, so... Then we go back to Calamrilla and Nyx, and... Nyx is describing the desert. She says that during the day it is the 
hottest desert known to Elf, which I love uh, that she says to Elf because that's like a way to twist it around. Uh, known to man, known to Elf. I think that's cool. Um, and then she says at night it is crawling with soul serpents, which we obviously know what those are already from season one, um, one of the first episodes in season one, where we see the two-headed soul serpents, um, who Viren says he can use to save uh, the life of Harrow. There we go. Save Harrow's life. Um, so, Cal and Rayla eventually agree, uh, which I love how they agree to this. I don't know why I love why, how they agree to this. They just kind of look at each other, kind of, seems like they kind of know what each other is thinking, and they just both nod, which is awesome. <laughs> <clears throat> I then wrote, I love the show of Callum's clumsiness. I think I wrote this when they got onto the, uh, I think it's called an Ambler, or an Andler, or something along those lines. Uh, he just completely he just falls off his mount, which is funny. So let me go back to Ezrin, um, and he's in his throne room, and he goes on another rant, uh, this time to Bates, about how these pieces on this board aren't just pieces on a board, they're real people, 500 people each. And then that gosh darn freaking councilman Celine shows up and is like, there may be another way. There may be a way to prevent this bloodshed. This whole deal that they make in this episode makes no sense to me. I don't know if I'm just not well versed in politics, which I'm not, but <clears throat> I just don't really understand why it happened, and how that helps anything. I tried piecing it together, but it's still a little confusing, but we'll get there. Um, I also wrote, I love his relationship with Bates, referring to Ezrin. <clears throat> so, let me go back to Callum and Rayla, um, and on the Ambler, Callum is worried about Rayla, and he tries again to go comfort her, but she again pushes him away. Then the ambler gets its foot, its foot stuck. And then we get the greatest scene of all time. <clears throat> when I saw this show for the first time, I actually, the first episode I saw from the Dragon Prince, unfortunately, was this episode. <laughs> well, actually, I think it might have been the next episode. But... <laughs> It was like these two episodes, and I wish that I hadn't seen these originally, because it spoiled several things for me, but I was like watching over my brother and sister-in-law's shoulders on my sister-in-law's computer, so, yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, but this scene was one of the first scenes that I saw, and it is the greatest scene I have ever seen. We get like this weird, like, wonky music starts to play. Um, while Nyx is trying to get the foot unstuck, and Callum, after she tells Callum not to touch her stuff, he sees her staff with the boomerangs on it. And, as we know, Callum is voiced by the same voice actor as Sokka from Avatar The Last Airbender, who has his trusty boomerang. <laughs> and then Callum approaches the staff with the boomerangs on it. He's like, there's something... So strangely familiar. Boomerang? And then it gets cut off, and I'm like, Dude, is this confirmation that there's, like, a freaking multiverse with Callum and Sokka, or, like, is, like, Callum Sokka in, like, a different timeline or something? This is, this is huge. <laughs> like, is this confirmation that those are the same universe? What is this? Is Callum a reincarnation of Sokka? <laughs> I don't know. So many thoughts and theories come to my mind, even though this is probably just a joke, since it's by the same creators as Avatar. But, yeah. <clears throat> I just think it's great. <sighs> Anyways. <clears throat> well, my throat is being interesting right now. I love that. Okay. So, in my notes I wrote, Then the greatest scene of all time happens. Boomerang? 
Nyx gets the foot unstuck. <laughs> That's all I wrote for that scene. Um, yeah, so... Let's see. Let me go back to Ezrin, um, and he is... He uses his old, like, I guess, like, tunnel thing with the grate to get into the baker's area. And the baker has patched up the grate, but he breaks it for Ezrin, which I think is awesome. So Ezrin comes in, he accepts the jelly tart, but he says that the reason he's there is to give... is to make sure that the baker takes care of bait. So he is giving bait to the baker temporarily... Um, and we have one of the saddest scenes in this show. Just the looks and between Bait and Ezrin as Ezrin is leaving. <laughs> so sad. And Bait turns blue, which is his symbol for being sad. And it's just, yeah. I'm sad. <laughs> that was such a sad scene. But Ezrin has to leave bait behind, and we'll find out why very soon. And, uh, I also wrote, so I wrote for the scene, Ezrin says something might happen and asks the baker to take care of bait. And then I wrote a quote, I want you to know that I've always seen you as a kindred spirit. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> that was a very, very bad impression of bait that was not at all an impression of bait, actually. Um, so then, we go back to Calum and Rayla, and they have reached the Oasis, which protects against the, uh, the soul serpents because of this barrier that is made by the obelisks around this Oasis. Um, and then we have... Just Nyx shipping Callum and Rayla <laughs> with like a weird innuendo in there as well. Uh, she's like, I wasn't sure if you needed two blankets or just one. And they're like, they both get like incredibly awkward here. And they're like, uh, no, definitely, definitely two, two, definitely two. <clears throat> uh, and that is the end of that page. Let's go to my other half a page. Okay. So then we go back to Viren, back in Catullus, um, and there's like this weird goo on his eye, and the bug says that it is done, uh, takes the goo off of his eye, and when Viren opens his eye, there's like a weird, like, white stuff on his eye, and when he looks around, he can now see Erebos in the room with him, which I'm not exactly sure how this works, since he's, I think he's trapped in this place with the mirror, um, <clears throat> but, just, somehow he's there, but also not there, just like, Bjorn can see him, but, it's like he's like a, like, rejection of Erebos or something, I'm not sure. <clears throat> then, um, Erevos says that he can now better serve Viren, but clearly he is being used. Um, it's very clear that Viren is not the one in control here. So let me go back to Callum and Rayla. Um, Callum wakes up to the sound of Rayla crying. He again tries to go and comfort her, but she runs away, and he runs after her. And then we see Nyx wake up, which is not a good sign. So then we go back to Ezrin. Um, and clearly something is going on, um, because it's said that Ezrin set some conditions for something to happen, uh, that the battle needs to be called off, and anyone who does not wish to fight anymore can go home. Um, he's then taken, he takes the crown off, places it on the throne, and he is taken into custody, and is switched out for Viren, who then says that he is not sorry that it's come to this. Now, this is the part that I'm confused about. Like, I can see making Viren, like, his regent or something, or, like, allowing Viren to become king to prevent the bloodshed, which doesn't prevent all the bloodshed, but I'm just so confused about this deal. I need some kind of explanation in Season 4, because I'm, I'm still confused. 
Clearly, something happened along the lines of Urin getting out of jail and Ezrin going to jail and giving up the crown, and this would prevent the battle from happening. But I'm not really sure. I just need an explanation for this at some point. Um, and Erebos is shown to be right there at Urin's side, which is not a good sign. Let me go back to Callum and Rayla. And Rayla's still feeling bad about herself, and then Callum just decides to go with the tough love tactic, and he's like, Shut up! <laughs> just to stop it. Stop talking bad about yourself. And then he tells her all the things that are amazing about her, and she agrees with him, and then she freaking kisses him. She kisses him. <laughs> I wrote this in all caps. She kisses him. <laughs> If y'all don't know already, I am a huge Raylum shipper, and this scene was beautiful to me. Unfortunately, though, uh, Calum says he did not mean it like that. When Rayla realizes what she did, she's like, we will never speak of this again. Never. Ever. <sighs> she's, she even threatens to bind herself to kill him if he ever speaks of this again. And Calum's like, mm-hmm, yep. And then he smacks himself on the forehead, which is interesting. And then they go back to the camp, but they realize that it's been abandoned, the fire has gone out, um, the, uh, the Ambler is gone, as well as Zim and Nyx. So Zim is missing. And that is the end of the episode. Very interesting episode, I had to write a page and a half. We have Ezrin is in prison, Viren is out of prison, we had a Braylum kiss, and we have them crossing halfway across the Midnight Desert, and now Zim is missing. Yeah. Also, Viren can see Erebos now, so this was kind of a big episode. Uh, a lot happened, it's a very good episode, the humor was good, but there wasn't much of it. What humor there- what humor there was- the humor that was there was good, uh, like the boomerang scene, I like that they added that little, like, dash of humor in there, but the best part of this episode, I think, was the emotion, um, and the story developments. Just a very good episode, I think it was very well written, um, we see a lot of emotional struggle, in, a lot of emotional struggle in this episode, which is good, I think. But anyways, uh, yeah, that is all I have for today, so I will now go over my next four videos, uh, for all of my channels. I do have a fourth channel now, but I'm not gonna share the name of it if you come across it, fine. But, yeah, it's just like a, I'm reading books aloud channel thing. So if you come across it, sure, but I'm not gonna advertise it as part of the Keeper of the Movies, Keeper of the Books, Keeper of the Games trio. I'm just gonna keep that separate from those but anyways uh for keeper of the movies next four weeks worth of videos we have let me pull up my google doc i'm pretty sure i know what they all are but i'm just gonna double check um just go google docs uh keeper of the movie sets Uh, Dragon, so Dragon Prince Season 3, Episode 5 review, Dragon Prince Season 3, Episode 6 review, Dragon Prince Season 3, Episode 7 review, and the Dragon Prince Season 3, Episode 8 review. Pretty simple. Uh, as for Keeper of the Books, at this point, uh, we should be all caught up there. So, I believe it should be... Uh, Dex versus Annabeth in the side character tournaments, Keef versus Halt in the side character tournament, the winners of those two rounds versus each other in the finale of the side character tournament, and episode one of the villain tournament, which I have that somewhere. Is that it? It will be Dr. Hatch from Michael Vey versus Yasin Grigorovich from... Alex Ryder. That's the first episode of the Villain Tournament. As for Keeper of the Games, next four weeks worth of videos will be 
I'm pretty sure it's just a bunch of, yeah, it's just a bunch of Legend of Zelda stuff, Breath of the Wild. Um, unfortunately, I'm still having some malfunctions with my, um, with my setup, so I'm not going to be able to make any more gaming videos on the Switch right now, but I'm working on getting that fixed. Uh, yeah. Anyways, so that is all I have for today. I will see you guys next time. Bye.